Thank you. All right, we're going to move into the work session. Uh, we have no correspondence to speak of. So number one on the agenda is the Granite Knolls Park Solar Project. This is a pre-preliminary application. Location is 2975 Stony Street. How are you? Uh, good evening, Chairman Fon, members of the board. Uh, Adam Rodriguez, town attorney. Supervisor couldn't be here tonight. He asked me to show up and just kind of introduce the project to you all, although I'm sure you're very familiar with it. Uh, to just give a quick recap for the board. The town board issued a request for proposals for the development of a solar facility at the Granite Knowles Sports Complex. After a fairly lengthy procurement process, interviews, and, and much deliberation, the town board selected HESP Solar to construct the solar facility you see in front of you. Um, and entered into a 25-year lease agreement for the property at Granite Knolls. <coughs> the the high-level points of the lease, it's a 25-year lease. The anticipated revenues are approximately $145,000 a year to the town. And you can see there's a carport over the parking lot. There's also a, a ground mount area in the top right quadrant. And we'll, I don't know, Robin, are you pulling that up? Because mm -hmm. the public can't see the map. I'll just wait a second. Is it true that some of the revenues that are coming in are going to go to John Tegeter's raise? <laughs> <laughs> That's attorney-client privilege. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, that's not enough. <laughs> John, say nothing further. <laughs> so, so there, there's the. Oh, that's one of the. That looks like actually a, a different plan, actually, Robin. It's loading slowly. Oh, okay. For some reason. So that's, those are the <coughs> two main components of the project. In the top right quadrant, those are the ground mount uh, solar panels. And then over the parking lot is the canopy system. There's also supposed to be a small battery storage facility. I don't, if you zoom in, you may be able to see it, but it's, it's near the, uh, the basketball court there to the right of it where that shed is. Yeah, it's anticipated to be in that, in that area of the shed. So again, the, the anticipated revenue stream, if the system is designed as proposed, is 140, approximately $145,000 a year. And the town board passed a resolution, uh, I think it was last week, to dedicate or to create a capital improvement trust for the parks department, basically, to ensure that the revenue is dedicated to capital improvements for the parks system. The lease, one of the other main components of the lease agreement <coughs> is that Hess uh, agreed to provide the town with an, up sum, uh, an upfront lump sum payment of $500,000 to go toward repaving the parking lot. Um, it's one of the things that the parks department really wanted. So that's in there. Um, and you know, all uh, estimates are that that would be enough revenue to pay for it. So it'd be um, you know, revenue neutral to the town. If there are any questions, you know, I can certainly try to answer them. Otherwise, I'll turn it over to HESP to kind of go through the project in more detail. Is $500,000 in addition to the anticipated revenue per year? No, it would, it would be a, a, an upfront lump sum payment, but be offset against the 140. So you got about five years upfront payment, or four yeah. years upfront. Well, it, it's offset on a pro rata basis throughout the term of the lease. So it doesn't, you don't take the hit up. It's not like you won't get revenue for five years. Right. So it helps with budgeting. How are you? Hi, good. How are you doing? Good. Eric Redding with Bergman. Uh, we're the engineers on the project, and uh, Adam give a good overview of the project, and uh, I have a few more details to share um, what we have so far as we move along in the, uh, the design process. Um, so the system will produce a total of 1.3 megawatts AC of power. Um, the gr carport system is approximately 1.7 acres in size. Uh, the ground-mounted system is about 1.5 acres in size. Um, the ground mounted system is located in mostly a uh, grassed or brush area, so no trees will be cleared for the array itself. Um, but there are some trees, as you see to the southeast, uh, kind of surrounding the array. So some of those trees will be trimmed back a little bit uh, to eliminate any shading on the panels, um, so they are uh, efficient. 
Um, the panels will be enclosed by a 20, uh, a uh, seven foot high chain link fence um, with a 20 foot wide double swing gate for access. Um, and we're also not proposing uh, disturbance over an acre. So then that means we don't have to get any stormwater permitting through the DEC or the New York City DEP as well. Um, any areas that we do disturb though will be reseeded with a wildflower pollinator type of seed mix. And if the board has any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. Anything from the board? No. No. You know, again, I, w we've seen so many solar projects come in, and some of them just seem easy. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an area which has clearly been developed some years ago uh, by the town with the beautiful park we have up there. And it's really nice to hear that the money's going to go back into the, the town rec department. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they could use the revenue. Uh, just first blush, seems pretty straightforward. Sure. Pretty good. We appreciate you showing up tonight. Great. We're looking forward to seeing the progress as we go through. John, we missing anything on your end, Jim? Not at present. I think. Uh, no, I, think me. I think you could do the PIH. Okay. You want? Can we set that up? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next we have Crystal Court Subdivision. This is a discussion. How are you? Everyone. Good to see everybody in person. Good evening. Uh, John Barilli, Panbar Realty for Crystal Court. Uh, I believe that we've um, satisfied everything that was asked of us. We had some uh, drawings redone. Uh, we were in front of um, the tree committee or the uh, conservation committee. We redrew the plans for the tree replacement, brush replace, brush removal. And we're looking to see what we need to do next. Oops. So John, what are our next steps here? Did you receive the uh, tree committee la latest memo from July? Mm, no. Okay, we'll get that to you. They do have some further. Oh, it's on the back. <laughs> further uh, recommendations. Uh, but I think, did, Robin, do we have a public hearing on this yet? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think for, if you feel that you're ready for September, you can consider a decision. We can draft a resolution for you and make sure that some of the remaining um, recommendations of the tree committee and the conservation board are satisfied. Is it just a minor obstacle? Is it just a few minor changes? Because I thought we pretty well had it covered the last time I spoke with them. So I don't it's like it's dated July 11th. Okay, no, I never yeah, saw that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You need to, you know. You, well, you can read them. I don't think any of them seem to be major rec recommendations or comments. Yeah, this is it's, it's very minor. Okay. You can hold on to that. Thank you. Yeah. The only concern I have at this point is is finishing up the the conservation easement piece. Okay. I don't know if you've had any further discussions with any agency in terms of, you know, memorializing that donation, so to speak. Well, we tried to donate it to the town, but it seemed that the town engineer at the time decided he didn't want it. And that's pretty much where we left off with that. So what is it you need from us? Well, in order for an easement to take place, there should be some sort of an agency that, or an entity that holds it and, and uh, acts on it in, you know, to protect the easement that's given. And there are various agencies, that, not the town government, but there are land trusts out there that... I reached that them. Nobody wants it. I reached out to the Westchester Land Trust, okay. Putnam County, uh, a couple down county in Westchester. Can't seem well, to... How do we handle the easement piece of this <coughs> application then? Well, many, many are held uh, in favor of the town. 
Uh, the town. So, so you can, um, and then with the town typically has the right but not the obligation to do the maintenance that they feel uh, needs to be done within the conservation easement if, if <coughs> the uh, landholders are not. Uh, but the discussion earlier in this subdivision was that the town did not want to take additional land, where they, whereas we have outright. to make it outright. Uh, and there were not any, as I recall, uh, other entities such as West Chester Land Trust that were interested in being a named uh, holder of the easement. So the pr pre preference in this case was actually the town having the easement. And did the town accept that? Yes. <coughs> There's two ways you can do it. In the often in the past, there was easement language on on the plat, on the plat alone. Uh, of late, we've been having that as well. In addition, we also have had written easements that the town board actually accepts and that also get filed along with the plat. I would recommend that second course of action in this case. Okay. And then I would tie up that that issue. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want to meet with John? Sure. And work out the details? Absolutely. All right? Good. And then we'll see you in September. Great. See you then. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Much. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Okay, next we have uh, 3666 Old Yorktown Road. This is a discussion of a fence. <laughs> this has been on three meetings. Okay. Put that one off. All right. Next, we have uh, the bird bus sales and service. Crazy how long this is this brand is, new, right? Yeah. Pre preliminary discussion. Locations: three eight zero five Prompton Road. How are you? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Darius Shafazade. I'm an attorney with the law firm Harris Beach in White Plains. With me are uh, well, Bird Bus, Rob Reichen back here. And his father, Rick, owners of Bird Bus, and they're going to explain a little bit about the company. And then we're going to have JMC run through the project, what we're proposing for the uh, former uh, Kia dealership uh, that we're looking to redevelop. Um, so we'll start off with Rob with a little introduction about Bird Bus, and we can answer any questions you have. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Reichenbach, Bird Bus Sales. Uh, we're the largest distributor of school buses on Long Island, New York City, and Westchester. Uh, we currently have an operation on Long Island and operate in Plain, uh, in Elmsford, New York. Uh, we came across this property um, and are looking to make a move up to the town of Yorktown. Uh, we don't, uh, when people think of school buses, they may think of a lot of operations in and out, a lot of traffic. That's not who we are. We are a distributor of school buses, similar to a car dealership. Mm. Uh, Ford or Chevy that you would go to purchase a car, but in selling 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 cars, we sell school buses. Um, our customers consist of all of the school districts in Westchester, as well as the third party operators and private contractors. Um, what we don't do is heavy duty maintenance. We don't do a lot of heavy duty engine work. Uh, what our primary uh, use of the vehicle in the property is prepping the vehicle for delivery which occurs off-site so we don't have a lot of foot traffic inside of our property and when we do perform maintenance it's a state inspection performed by New York State which comes in to inspect the vehicle these vehicles are inspected twice a year uh, and must be inspected before a new bus goes out therefore uh, if there is any work it's light it's light electrical work uh, and and maintenance. Can I ask a question? So, uh, car dealership, you have a, a trailer that comes in with all the cars. Correct. What happens in a situation like this? You, are you took on full size buses? Uh, we we sell small small size school buses and your large size school bus. Uh, these vehicles are driven in, dropped off, and then uh, the driver uh, finds a way home, whether it's a railroad or public transportation. Uh, and like I said, uh, they're not trailered, so we deliver the vehicle off-site to the end user. 99% uh, of our sales occur off-site, so there aren't customers coming to the facility to look at a school bus. 
Um, most people don't wake up on, on a Sunday morning and say, hey, I want to go see the bells and whistles of a new school bus. Um, but uh, it's to us, uh, that's what we do. We, we, we think they're beautiful vehicles. Uh, they're the safest vehicles on the road. You're 80 times safer in a school bus getting to and from school than you are in a normal passenger car. Um, and it's our job to make sure those vehicles meet those standards and stay up to spec. So if Bill got up one morning and says, you know, I think I want to go buy a school bus, bus. could he walk in there and? Uh, it, in, the, in reality, yes, you can. You can come and do a demo. But like I said, 99% of the time, we would take the vehicle to your operation to show you and demo the bus off-site at your facility so you know how it's going to operate in your terrain. How many buses will you have on site at a time, do you think? Uh, I, I can give, leave that up to, to okay. JMC okay. to get into the specifics of the, of the site. Question, you don't manufacture the buses? We do not manufacture. So like I said, we operate similar to a car dealership where we'll be procuring the vehicles, getting prepped, and then deliver the vehicles to the end. Uh, we, are, we sell Bluebird school buses. The, uh, we are, <coughs> you'll see them right, right around this area. Um, we actually lead in alternative fuels. So we sell not just diesel buses, but about 60 to 70% of our vehicles operate on gasoline, propane, and now electric. I delivered the first four electric, 100% zero emission electric school buses mm. on Long Island and are moving uh, the next 11 in New York State uh, in, in November as well. So th that's the way the future is going is electric school buses. Yeah. Uh, zero emission clean so that's so when we talk about a site like this what we want to do upgrade it so that we can produce the uh, deliver the vehicles for the future very interesting <coughs> yeah yeah it's and like I said we we operate very similar to a car dealership but instead of a car it's it's a hundred thousand dollar school bus so gonna have to make the doors bigger <laughs> that, that's, that's what we'll talk with, with JMC about. All right. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. They went for the solar panel. Good evening. For the record, Paul Dumont, JMC. I uh, just want to take a step back and, and talk a little bit about the property. Um, the property is located at 3805 Crompon Road. It's the, the former uh, Kia dealership. It is uh, 2.74 acres in size. And as shown on the aerial map, uh, it's comprised of two uh, parcels. Um, the property lies within the town C4 uh, commercial zoning district. Uh, school bus sales is classified as an automobile sales use, which is specially permitted within the zone. Uh, there are some special permit criteria, which I'll, I'll touch on shortly. Uh, just to orient everybody, uh, north is to the right on this plan. Uh, the site's bordered by Crompon Road to the north. Uh, Garden Lane and the 202 Diner to the west, single family homes to the south, and the New York Bariatric Group building uh, to the east. Uh, in order to support the uh, reoccupation of the property, uh, the applicant is proposing some renovations to the building as well as the site. Uh, I'll just flip the plan. So here's a preliminary site plan we've prepared for the property. Uh, with regard to the building, uh, the applicant will be uh, cleaning up the facade. The, the front building, um, there will be interior renovations and will house the, the offices and, and the dealership. Uh, the rear uh, uh, garage building, uh, the roof will be raised to accommodate uh, the proper height for school buses to enter the uh, service doors uh, and that will be uh, the service portion of the, the dealership. Uh, with regard to the site, um, the blue uh, hatched area that's shown on the plan, uh, on the bottom of the plan, is the school bus storage area that we're proposing. Uh, we're proposing uh, a storage area that can accommodate 48 school buses on the property. Um, the access and curb cuts on the site will be maintained. Uh, there's currently two curb cuts on Crompon Road. Uh, the uh, one to the east is an enter only, and the, uh, the one uh, at the top is an exit only, so we'll maintain that one-way flow. 
Uh, we will also be uh, maintaining the parking spaces in the front of the building that exist today. Uh, those will be customer parking spaces. Uh, and we're also uh, proposing some additional customer parking spaces uh, in the uh, bottom right corner on the plan. Um, This area here uh, will be a proposed landscaped area uh, with which will have some screening landscaping as well as a fence uh, to screen the, the storage area. Uh, and uh, lastly, in the rear of the property, we're proposing uh, 10 employee parking spaces. Uh, just want to touch, uh, as I mentioned, there are some special permit criteria for the automobile sales use. Just want to touch on a few of those. Uh, there's a requirement for customer parking. Uh, Ten spaces are required. We're providing 18. Uh, there's a requirement to have the storage area screened. Uh, the, there's a maximum size for the storage area. Uh, we're proposing about a 19,000 square foot storage area. Uh, I believe 40% uh, <coughs> of the lot area is permitted. We're proposing about 16%. Uh, and uh, there's also a, a special permit criteria uh, that dictates the maximum amount of vehicles that can be stored on the property. Uh, based on the lot area, 59 vehicles are permitted and we're storing, uh, proposing to store 48. Uh, so with that said, um, we're here to get your initial feedback <coughs> and answer any questions you might have. And uh, Robert and Rick can answer any operational questions. The first one I have is probably operational. Hours of operation? Uh, that 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. You got to oh, you gotta, I'm sorry, you got to. <coughs> uh, we, we operate uh, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, is when, when our employees are in. All right. We have uh, Monday to Friday. There was another operation approved in the area, which does a lot of night work, especially with the backup alarms and lights. It became an issue. So this is something your standard work hours. Our, sta know. our standard work hours are 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you wouldn't foresee buses being delivered through the middle of the night. There, there wouldn't be traffic coming in and out of the property at night, middle of the night, or anything like that. Okay, great. Um, and I don't know if it was ever resolved, but the the road, the side road, Garden Lane. Yeah, the ownership of is that still a private road? Yes, it is my knowledge yes the whole thing from 202 in no from about uh, the second lot the triangular part of the lot uh, north uh, south of that is town owned but the portion between the diner and this building is I believe still uh, not owned by the town all right so you guys they own or I'm sure if you bought this you own they own to the middle of that road I believe so Double check that. Yeah, for next this time might well. be a good time to get rid of that. <laughs> Maybe the town's <laughs> taking over. Um, hey, can you can you just point? I don't. I'm getting a little. Confused. You know the road between the diner and and the Kia. What what is the Kia now? Right here. Yeah, yeah, you own half of that. So up to about here. No, no, up oh. to the middle of the road. The lot, the long. Oh, oh, that right, way. Right yeah. in the middle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there was an issue, and I, I, I don't know, at some point it got paved some years back. Uh, well, in order for the town to take it, it would have to be up to town road standard. standard, and that had been the difficulty. For this, this might possibly be a good time to look at that again, because I'm sure you guys probably wouldn't want to own the road, and I'm not sure if the, the diner is interested in, in owning that too, because that means the maintenance of it is yours and across the street. And I know, I'm sure there's other issues that surround it with that. So it's just something to start, you know, I would, I would take a look at. Uh, and another thing, with, and I heard, you know, you started to talk about the landscaping. I know we've been very sensitive, sensitive to that with the other applications. I think it's going to be just as sensitive here. Um, past that, I didn't have any real quick thing. Well, I think it's a good fit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the place really needs some help. <laughs> You know. Well, it's we we do want to give it a nice facelift, make it look uh, presentable. It's a represent representation of our company as well. Yeah, uh, we have a great reputation <coughs> within our industry, uh, and I think this would be a great opportunity to display 
uh, a great fit for the town and for Bird Bus. Where's your place in Elmsford? Uh, we're in Warehouse Lane. Oh, Warehouse Lane. Um, Amazon has just recently moved yeah. in there into that uh, into that facility. Would you be living there? And just we would be we would be we rent that property currently. So uh, we are looking to purchase this via, this property, move in full time, and, and make this um, uh, a great operation for us and, and, and for the town. The second piece of property you are going to leave unused. As of right now, we don't have a, a plan for it. That's. JMC can talk about that part. Robert said it all. As of now, there's there's no plans for that parcel. Okay. John, anything on your end? Uh, this one? I think um, the lighting will be something that we have to look at closely. And that's been a very <coughs> sensitive issue along that strip. Anything on your end, Jim, right now? Um, Paul, can you tell me how the school bus inspections are handled? Is there one time throughout the year when all the buses are inspected or are they inspected uh, throughout the year as uh, as licenses expire or um, how is that? In other words, would there be a flood of vehicles at certain times of the year or would it be a fairly consistent it would number? be It would be fairly consistent throughout the year. Uh, the summertime, uh, Customers are looking for their vehicles for school start during that Octo uh, August, August, early September. Um, so there may be a little bit more activity at that time of the year. However, like I said, we do the first inspection on every new school bus before it is delivered. After that, the end user, whether it be a third party contractor or a school district, the inspectors go to those facilities oh, okay. uh, to perform it. So. Uh, when you're when we're talking about school buses, they do not come. They typically do not come back to our facility for a reinspection. Uh, we have a couple up. We have we do have a couple customers that we do the inspection for, but those are scheduled uh, six months in advance. So we have a we have a consistent schedule hmm. for those vehicles. Okay, thank you. It's not random. It's not, uh, and there's a maximum that can be done per day. Um, so there are, it's not like we're going to be doing 50 inspections um, uh, where we don't have the activity as a car dealership. So uh, if we do five, five or six repair orders, I guess you could say inspections a day um, or uh, maintenance on a vehicle, uh, that, that would be a typical day. So um, and that it does not mean that there are five or six vehicles coming into our facility a day. Um, they may come in three or four at a time, but it's not three or four at a time every single day. All right. Well, as this starts to progress, obviously, I would definitely work closely with, with John's office. Uh, I know the town engineer is not here tonight <coughs> with uh, the building department and obviously the engineering department. And I think the physical appearance of this is going to be important. Right. Um, I, I heard you're, you're raising the, the roof to, you know, modify it to get the buses in. Uh, I know one of the, the, the things we really look at here is to make sure, I mean, it's a flat road, so that any equipment, if it's on the roof, is kind of shielded from the road. Um, and again, obviously, the, the, the physical appearance is going to be very important. And I would just look into that road ownership. Okay. All right. That's something, you know, as a, if you're buying it, it's something I would definitely be um, interested in right. figuring out. Okay. All right. Do you want to set them up for a PIH? Can we do that, Robin? Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. If you want to put solar panels on the roof, we know some people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're selling electric buses now, so. <laughs> it, How it long helps. does an electric bus r run for with that? Uh, the, the range is up to 120 miles. Uh, on a full charge, it takes on a DC fast charge, the bus will go from 0% to 100% in just over three hours. Hmm. Incredible, things change so quick. Yeah. We have uh, Bluebird, had, we're right at 750 electric school buses ordered or delivered already, though we're number one in the United States. Congratulations. So we're, we're almost at that thousand mark. We've been doing it for, uh, Bluebird's been around since 19, 09 or so so we're the only school bus manufacturer 
whereas the other school bus companies are truck dealers as well. We do school bus only. Uh, and that's that's what we that's what we're interested in doing. That's great. Welcome Thanks. to your camp. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think the town would even want this road? Yes. O only if the road is uh, constructed to town specification. I mean, it just seems like a liability. You'd have to yeah. plow it. And you'd have to light it. <coughs> it only saves two. Right. Serves two yeah. customers. But the way it is now, uh, no one's really maintaining it properly. So. What's up, man? I have a different agenda. Okay, next we have the Northern agenda. Westchester Executive <laughs> Park, yeah. also known as GHP Strang LLC. This is a discussion site plan. 2651 Strang Boulevard. How are Hello you? Again, very good. You? Good. Joe Tremelli from Keller Sessions, uh, representing GHP Strang. This is uh, just a follow-up to the public informational hearing that was closed last week. I know that the board had a couple of questions. There was a resident with some comments and concerns. Uh, if you remember, we were asked to do an inspection of some of the ongoing activities very much that were out there. We did that uh, the next day, I believe it was, Tuesday. Went out to the site, uh, took a look at what was going on, and found, as, as we had stated at the meeting, that everything that is going on is being done in accordance with any current permits with the town. There is some interior renovation work being done uh, to the building. Uh, the road that was, quote unquote, road that was mentioned is a temporary construction access road that was built to gain access to the lower level, which is the, um, you know, what we're here for, for the, the access to that lower level of the parking lot. They needed temporary access for construction vehicles to get to that, uh, that lower level for some of the demo work. <coughs> a construction access road can, uh, built its you know, typical uh, crushed stone, uh, asphalt millings. It's all stable. Any down gradient areas were stabilized and protected with silt fence. There were no signs of erosion. Um, so it was, it was built to you know, industry standards uh, and, and is stable and operating as intended. The soil stockpiling that was referenced is directly related to the removal of an existing 20,000 gallon underground fuel oil storage tank. And that's immediately adjacent to the upper parking lot um, in the area of the proposed ADA access ramp that uh, will gain access. So we're, I can't seem to log on for some reason to pull the plan up. Uh, Robin, you don't have them, do you? I do. But if you, if you recall, there was a, a ramp proposed at the existing loading dock and entry area where there's just stared access right now. Uh, this ramp would be in the area and, and immediately over the tank. The tank isn't being used anymore anyway, so they took the opportunity to, to remove it. Again, it's all under current permits. Um, the material is being stockpiled on plastic liners in the existing paved parking lot, uh, which is what the neighbor had seen. It is being covered uh, with plastic tarps at the end of the day, or, or certainly before any predicted storm events to provide uh, protection from erosion. Um, trying to think that those two issues, uh, there were some comments about the trees. Just the um, I guess current condition of the trees, uh, as was noted and I guess agreed to by the, the neighbor, many if not all of the trees north of our project area and, and the northern property are largely deciduous. Uh, there are some evergreens that border the property. I believe they're just on our site, if not you know into our site, maybe 10, 15 feet. Um, they seem to be in fair condition. They're not the greatest looking trees, but they are, they've been around. Um, they're probably 50, 60 feet tall. Uh, there are some vines growing on some of the trees, uh, but certainly nothing I think that would pose any kind of danger. Um, and lastly was I think there was a question as to the need for the parking lot. And, and as we stated a couple of times, uh, you've been to the site, um, you know it, it can be quite a walk from the south end of the property to the northern building, let alone the lower level. Uh, so just trying to provide some flexibility and some opportunity for new tenants. Uh, we did talk about maybe possibly a site walk. I don't know if that's done with the board as a joint walk or you just kind of go at your convenience. I, I, we um, definitely wanted to go out to, I don't, this one we might be easier just to go individually. I, I, I drove by there the other day. Yeah. I mean, it seemed fine to me. I, I, yeah, and I, I, you know, I think so. It looked like it was necessary. We think so. Yeah. I, I think it'll certainly help the situation. You know, especially, especially the, 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 the use of the bottom. Right. 
I don't see a need for a formal site visit here. No, I think we were just going to individually go out. And if yeah, I think that, that would be fine. If we and, and knowing the site, you know, it's important to note, again, that anything we're doing is going to be below the level of the existing parking lot. You'll right. never see it from the street. Yeah. There are some retaining walls, but again, you know, you won't see anything. You might not even see the tops of the, the uh, any light poles for the parking lot because it is set so far below the existing parking lot. Right. Uh, so from a you know, visual impact um, standpoint, the only there are three affected or three neighbors to the north, two of which are well over 200 feet away through that wooded area. Um, the neighbor, I believe, who was here at the informational hearing is the closest of the three, and he's at the he's closest to Strang Boulevard. Uh, and maybe I think it's about 170 feet, 150 feet, maybe from the nearest point of our proposed driveway. Uh, but uh, you'll see on the plan that the topography I wish I could. Oh, here you go. Um, the grade of our driveway uh, entrance or connection to the existing parking lot is probably two feet below. There's a little bit of a ridge, right? If you could see the, the adjoining property lines on the, the two lots to the north, there's a little bit of a ridge there. So that the topography climbs up from where we're connecting and then falls back down, probably about four to five feet to the patio level of the adjacent home uh, so again just it, very very limited visual impact uh, it would really just be any vehicles at the very top of that drive that would be leaving the site and not much different from any activity that might be happening in that lot currently uh, and we could certainly work with staff or the board and, and you know maybe extend the evergreen screening or relocate them a little bit to provide some additional uh, you know visual screening between the drive and the, and the residents. I think that's going to be key from what we heard from the residents yeah. last time. And I would work uh, with John's office to work out some of those details. Sure. Um, but I think that was their biggest concern. I think so. Was the visual. I, I think if I we think. simply took that, that row of evergreens and, and kind of followed that curve of the drive a little bit more yeah. and extended it further up, I think that'll satisfy any concerns. Yeah, if you could concerns. work with John. Do you guys, sure. uh, you guys work with the landscape architect, right? I know somebody. Is it Dave Sessions? I think so. Okay, so maybe he can look. He's at got that. some letters after his name. Yes, <laughs> that, that might be a good area to possibly tweak. But I would yeah. ask if you could work closely with sure. with John's office. Absolutely. Did I miss anything? Uh, could you just describe the temporary access road, its location, how much grading was done, and the difference between what you're showing on the existing drawing and what additional grading has to be done in, to do the final road as you're showing now sure so along with your question that's okay um, you know what Robin what's the code I think I could it finally woke up over here <laughs> were there any fences Nine proposed here too thank you got to ask that on top of the wall or around the wall what was that? I'm sorry. Were any fences proposed? Uh, not yet. We're still working out those details. Um, probably not along. We'll have a, a guide rail, I'm sure, along the drive. Okay. Um, whether or not we need something on the, uh, let's see. Whether or not we need something along the top of the, uh, the lower retaining wall for the parking lot, um, we need to figure that out. I, okay. I'm not sure that we will because there's um, let me just pull. the only real access from above will be on that ramp. Um, let me just try and do this. Sorry. So you have this this access ramp here that will have railings and and you know direct any pedestrians from the parking lot into the building or along this walkway down some stairs, which again would have railings, keeping anybody from you know, going to either side. Right. So whether or not we need a fence here on top of that wall, I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't know that it's really needed. We will have, like I said, a guide rail along this side of the drive. Um, so if, if there is a rail on that side, especially because it's proximity to the, to the residential, is there any way that could be done like a wood rather than a Steel? Yeah, I'm sure the owner would probably prefer that okay. from a, you know, aesthetic value. A um, as you start to work through those details yeah. again, sure. Include John in that. And 
Let me just go to the grading plan. I think it might help. Okay. So, I, obviously, I don't have the access road shown on this plan, John, but as, as best I could tell from being out at the site, there, the access road, the temporary access road, starts a little further up from where our connection is shown, kind of in, in this area here, and then follows generally this same alignment. And it turns right around this contour here. There's an existing tree that is still there, and that road is down beneath it and comes down you know, right into this area where the existing, uh, or where the proposed, rather, uh, loading dock and, and walkway is. So, uh, so they, as far as any, they've accomplished a, a good amount of the fill that you're showing here. Is that fair to say? No, not at all. They they did very little regrading of that area to build the construction road. Uh, you know, it's for construction vehicles, so they don't need to obviously meet grades and, and code requirement for slope and whatnot. So there was very little done in the way of reshaping existing grades. They needed to fill obviously a little bit. You want it level. You don't want to have that 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 access road sloping to the, the one side um, but certainly nothing close or, or nothing has begun for the grading that would be required for this parking lot and you know we tried to do as best we can that the driveway connection itself is going to be fill for the most part the parking lot is uh, fairly well balanced there's maybe four to six feet of cut in this corner and about four feet of fill here so you know we're trying to work as best we can with the grades and and basically cut a little bit and flip it to the other side and use it as fill so the picture that you have photo seven that basically shows where the parking lot will be is that correct uh, let me try and i got the, the green bar of death here Apologies for the the lag here. Starting at it. Boy. If it doesn't want to work, it doesn't want to work. Is this the, the plan you're talking about, John? Uh, giving us a uh, no, football it's, it's actually this picture here. <laughs> oh, from the inspection report. Yeah, so you missed that. Um, I don't know if I have that handy, but um, sorry, with all the photo questioning. <laughs> so that, that picture shows where the park, the proposed parking lot down slope is going to go, right? Roughly, yeah. Yeah. And so they did a little flattening there, or, or they did not? No, not really. If you look at the topography, okay. it does. Um, it has a little bench <coughs> there. There is, yeah, you can so see it, it is steep as you first come off the upper parking lot, but then it, it there's a gradual slope. It does flatten a little bit before it drops again into the woods. Okay. Oops. Is the, is the concern that maybe the work that was done out there is kind of well when you look at the existing drawing i want to make you know how far off it was from the that as an actual condition so that we are really understanding what what the impacts are of, of all this fill understood so yeah. maybe there's less that's happening and, and you can see from the the photo the width of that access road is probably about 14 feet and there's very little in the way of regrading or disturbance on either side you know if there were reworking that hillside you would have seen obviously much more disturbance a wider swath of, of uh, disturbance and, and soil all right anything from the board no Maybe you start working out the details sure um premature to request a public hearing for next month um i think you can but it's you have to realize there could be some important details, albeit small and probably easy to solve, that may we may need to work on as we continue through the public hearing and beyond. So 
right with that, and you're gonna have to, you know, like it's worth. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a question of the of the visual, which may right. be an opportunity to not only make sure that this is screened properly, but that the existing par parking lot is screened more effectively than it may be now, because it's two varying uses. Sure. I think that's an opportunity to be taken. So, uh, things like that, and just yeah, making and sure some of these details with with what's shown on the existing, what's been permitted already, just right. making sure that our documents are accurate. Sure. And we, we'll certainly obviously work with you yeah. um, to get all that straightened out. And I think having the public hearing would only help us understand if there are any other concerns from the neighbor, for instance, and we could incorporate that into whatever we do. Yeah, and I'm sure, because everybody was noticed, there was one that came out. That's probably, yeah. a, you know. But I, I think we have a good handle on what, what we need to do. Yeah, Robin will set up. Right, Robin? What? We'll set up a public hearing? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. All right, Joe. I'm going to try and Thank you. shut this off. All right, let me step out of the way, and I will no rush. stop my sharing. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Nancy, do we need a timeout? <laughs> We're going to be all right? <laughs> Okay, how are you? Next we have the Par 3 Golf Course. This is a discussion <coughs> of the site plan. Yep. Location 795, Route 6. How are you? Good evening, town board members. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I guess for today, the purpose of tonight's meeting, I'll go over the mitigation plan that we have. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, in close, you guys all have a narrative of what I'll be going through. And um, we're going to go through the mitigation plan. The mitigation plan, um, we had a few uh, members of the board come over and visit the property. And we've agreed upon the south side of the property where the fringe of the golf course is going into the brook along the south side of the border going down. It ranges from anywhere from about 10 to 25 feet. We will be removing all the invasive species that are in there. Uh, some of the invasive species are the Japanese barberry, the bittersweet, and the wing euonymus. Um, other ones that we do see, we will also be taking out. We'll be taking them out by hand. Um, there'll be no pesticides or chemicals used. Uh, so that's about the, that's the south side. Uh, the north side on the Route 6, let me see if they have that. On the Route 6 side, um, we will be planting some, uh, let's see, what are we going to be planting? We'll be uh, planting some, here we go, perfect. Uh, along Route 6, the border, will be putting some eastern white pines, um, some hollies for the low lion, and some hemlocks. Those will be bordering, who will have safety for Route 6, so will enhance the look of the golf course. And um, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing on the mitigation on the north side. I think the big mitigation plan is going to be the brook. There's a brook that runs down the center of the golf course. Um, when we took the property over, there was nothing but weeds growing. As you can see right now, there's no shade, anything along that brook, and the brook is just allergy. Uh, not good for the ecosystem. So we will be planting, um, let's see, my eyes are really bad, here we go. Along the brook, and you guys have the um, map that we have, will be some red oaks. Um, the Sweet Bay Magnolia might change to just a regular magnolia that was uh, up there. Uh, sycamores, river birches, and lilacs. Those plantings will be on, if you look on page, on your fourth page, um, that's the vegetation that will be in the terrace zone. Um, below that, which is the bank zone. Um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be planting the winterberry, 
uh, the milkweed, the sunflowers, and the mountain mint. Mm -hmm. Those are those are all native. And then um, as we get into the um, splash zone, um, co uh, common uh, common reeds, sage, and co and cocktails, which a lot of cocktails are already there. And Sean, this is in addition to the trees. That's in addition to the trees. The, the, the brook, to be honest with you, I think the brook is going to be the more important thing of anything on that piece of property. As it stands right now, there's no shade for the water. So it's all allergy, evaporating. It's just really, that's going to be where we're probably going to put most of our work into. The north side with the uh, Route 6, that obviously is going to be tied in as a priority. Um, over the um, mitigation, it will be probably a two or three year program that we'll be working to remove all the evasive species. Um, but the brook right now, as you see the plan, that's going to be a priority for us. It's just for everything on that piece of property. That brook has to be taken care of. And the tree planting that you had proposed before and also what you talked about tonight on the north side will be done in one fell swoop or will that be that'll be that'll be in the beginning that'll be okay. one full swoop in the beginning because that's obviously safety between the between the fairways and other areas right is that what yes. we're talking about that's correct and on the north side <clears throat> what we were talking about we're on the property there's a gap those gaps will be full filled with the white um with the um eastern white pines or the hemlock Um, any other questions or is the uh, is the brook flowing now because I know it was, it was dry when, when I went there the, the brook has a little bit of water in it, it it's yeah. stagnant though right now yeah. and I believe that had to do with something with Hill Boulevard, Hill Boulevard yeah. because that water has been flowing the last three years and for some and whatever reason it stopped flowing um, I think that's that should be coming back <laughs> soon um, and again, there's no vegetation, no plantings <laughs> along it, so it's just allergy infested. We're, we're pulling cattails out hand by, by hand in spots just to get the water going. Any questions from the board? Yes. I have a few questions. Um, the cross-section that you've submitted, I don't see it up on the screen for the audience's benefit, uh, of these stream bank is not drawn to any particular scale. Am I right? I, I can't hear you. Page four. Page four. Yeah, the last There is a profile of a stream bank that you've attached to your plan. <clears throat> oh, right here. Yes. Yes. I don't know if it's possible to show the audience that. Okay, we'll get to that. So... Is this drawn? Is this particular re referencing your site, or is this just a schematic general diagram? This is a schematic general diagram okay. of what's going to. The brook is pretty much the same. This is going to run right throughout the brook. We only have the only um, issues we may have is back where the pond is. Okay, so this has no relationship in. to the actual distance from the center line of the stream to the various zones that are depicted. Am I right? That is correct. Do you know what those distances are? Well, it varies. Okay. I mean, the, 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 bro the, brook here, the brook comes in this wide and then goes out as far as, far as you and I. It varies. It's just not one stream. Is that making sense? Am I answering well, a question? There is, there is one stream channel that... Yes, sir, time, yes. Right? Correct. Okay. So whether it's a braided stream or not, each channel has a defined width that you're going to be working with. Yes. So my question is, do any of your plans show the actual layout and distances from the centers of the streams for the various plantings you're going to make? In other words, how far into the, how far away from the stream are you guys working? Um, the, would page three help you out? Do your plans show that information? The, the answer is no. The, the okay. answer is no, yeah. No. Pardon? Answers no. No. Okay. There's no. There's no. I think we need. That. I think we need that information. That, that, I, I, again, I I totally understand what you're what you're asking for. I, again, it, that's going to be one of those things when we go out and plant. We're going to have to look at where the sun comes in every day. There's a lot more to this than just going out and planting but plants. But you have a flat open area that you're working. It's with, a right? totally flat open area. Okay. Correct. 
So is it, is it something you can or cannot do then to show the actual layout of how the stream is going to be planted? So you want me to come back to the board with how many feet apart each one of these plants are going to be? Is that what it... No. That, that, you may need to do that anyway. In a normal landscaping plan, we actually see at some point the specific plants that are going in on the streams. What, what's the basis of my line of questions to you is the protection and enhancement of the stream and its banks to protect the stream from erosion, from chemical pollution, pesticides, fertilizers, and things like that, to restore that stream to something that, that's meaningful. Now, when I looked at the layout of the golf course, I saw many planted, air, you know, fairways, greens, I don't know the details of what you call them, but they would seem to butt up right against portions of the stream. So I don't know how much room you have or proposing to put these various levels of planting. Well, like, if you're like, going to have two feet on either side, I'd like to know that. If you're going to have more on either side, I think we should know that also. Because one of the references that came to us from the Tree Commission indicated, actually it was a Westchester County government study, 50 feet on either side of a stream is what you really need to restore a bank. Now, I don't know if that fits in with your fairways and greens, because those plans have never been adjusted to show any of that information. Right. It, I don't know if this an answer your question, but uh, if you look at, the, at where the plantings are, they're like river birches, they're red oaks. Obviously, they can't. Mm -hmm. there's a certain degree that they have to be back away from the river or they just will never grow. Right, but for, for our purposes in assessing the impacts of what you're doing, we, we need that information, okay? Yeah, but, but the burden, the, I think it's too much of a burden on them. Right now, that stream is not a stream, it's a trickle. They don't know how the uh, water course is going to be to make your banks out, so, I mean, you're... You, 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 you're looking at something in the future that's not there now. Correct. So, so how, how can you do something? I mean, I don't see how we can do it. Well, every plan we do is always looking into the future and is figuring out what's going to happen when they're done. But, but to my thought, the water is not there now. It may never come back. You've got a little bit of a trickle. You don't know what's going on there. And well, how that's could you part say of the, that this that's is part a stream? Sean, that, could you, could you establish... Wide? Could you establish dimension zones for each of these from generally the, the uh, center of the stream and the edge of the stream? Then you would have your bank zone in which you will be planting the things that you delineated. Right. And then you would have the other zone with, with, the, with an actual depth in which you would be planting the river birches and the other trees. Can you establish that? Um, yeah, we can establish that. With that, I mean, we're, we're going to have to go out and measure. I, again, it's like if you take a river birch, you, it doesn't say river. It means you plant it in the river. If this is a stream here, you're going to have to see what the terrain is because it's not all the same, whether it can be planted here or does it have to come back eight, eight nine feet. That's going to be a variable on pretty much each planting. But it's we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to work with the brook because right now the brook is it's not even good for the ecosystem. There's no shade. There's nothing. It's allergy. It's just not good. Is that where you're headed, Aaron, somewhat with a... Uh, you know, a number of feet from the from the actual water's edge, which yes, you would I, have the I'm bank looking, zone. I'm looking for that information, but I'm not looking for that information in a vacuum. I'm looking for that information to assess the impacts of this project on the stream and how to restore that stream. And if you have to move a green or a fairway over in order to do that, you may need to consider that too. That's That's something that may need to be done. This area has been identified as a New York State wetlands on their mapping system. Whether that's a valid thing or not for us to consider, I'm not sure. When you answered your EIF, you said, yes, this is also a wetlands area. Um, we've got it, and, and it's a big, it feeds in a lot of area here. It may not be functioning the way it did, but it did function at one point. I mean, you can go back and look at the historical photographs of this area, and you'll see what was going on over there. Um, when it was the golf course? Pardon? When it was the golf course? Even before that. Even before that. Before that, it was a swamp. What's the source of water for that stream? <laughs> the, uh, this water comes out, it, it drains north from the wetlands. That's um, Wildwood Wetlands, I think it's called. So is and, it a stream or is it a drainage? Another piece of it comes over from the uh, Osceola runoff. 
and then it all goes under the roads and keeps going. Well, what's, flo the, the what's flowing from there comes from the northwest corner of the property. So it's really coming from the tectonic drainage area. I don't, and it also goes in, there's wetlands. Well, it, it comes down and it goes through the course and then it dumps into the channel that drains Osceola and, and the Hill Boulevard area. So they're flowing so it, it, kind of against each other, believe it or not. The height of the stream will vary throughout the season, throughout the year. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. It also I will. I mean, there'll be times if it rains enough, the whole thing will be underwater. Right. It's happened. Is there so that's that's or telling. Step out? Right there. I think he's probably still around here somewhere. Downstairs. Downstairs? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I can't show this to you. Look, there he is. He's back. <laughs> hey, Dan. Yeah. We could use your expertise. Yeah, I'll take that. So, the the channel that they're looking to vegetate uh, on the golf course. All right, so that's the one that's central in the golf course. Yes. Okay. So that's shown as a, a state uh, wetland. Um, I think at this point we all understand that this was a golf course at some point. It was let go back to whatever it ended up being. Uh, and there was a lot of cleanup done in there. So what Aaron is looking to get at is we've got kind of a cross section, it's just a you know, typical cross section, not no detail to the project itself. Mm. Um, I think what Aaron's looking to do is possibly get, you know, the county's got a 50 foot setback, you said? From well, well I know it's gonna vary, but that's what they, you know, they recommend for maximum protection. Right. If, if but there's, there's, well, there's a bit, there's a, <laughs> A right, big piece of confusion right, here. Just let me finish okay. the thought, just so that. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm trying to do like a. Okay, good. You just right. setting me all up here yeah. for the punchline. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, you, you left. <laughs> um, so we have a typical cross section, right? This could go to my house anywhere, right? So, Aaron's got some information from what we've learned about this 50 foot setback where. Well, it's not plant, a setback. A, it's it's a determined area where there should be some vegetation to protect the stream. Right. And I think that's what he's struggling with. So we have some details of what they want to plant, you know, and it's kind of a, a plan that kind of lightly shows where everything's going to go. And I, I, yeah, that's the cross section. I know that's between, cross -section. That's where between that's some of the work right that there. I think John Tegeter has done to help, and I think yourself is there a way that we can get a little bit more specificity in this or detail so that Aaron well, is satisfied with well the, 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 the most important thing just for everybody to realize is this used to be the brook, but it's not anymore. The brook was relocated. So Aaron, I don't know if you're speaking to the county stream channel, because there's the county has a, um, in some parts of the county they regulate certain water courses so that that's shrub oak brook is a regulated stream channel but not here because at some point what appears to have happened is they've moved the stream cut off. they move well they didn't cut it off. yeah they, they i mean this is kind of like a leftover <coughs> from where the shrub oak brook used to be so do we abandon it altogether well i guess somebody i would i would think some prior owner before wetlands permits and such were a thing realized that they could utilize the property better by just pushing the stream over. Th this here, Aaron, you see that dark line? That's yeah. the re that's the relocated stroke channel. This now comes in this way and flows into it. So it's very different than it was <coughs> years ago. Yeah, we were trying to, I mean, the um, one of the principals was making the contention that the work on the bridge was making the water disappear. Right. Um, you know, we were out there several times where there's a bypass to p push the water through. I mean, the water was flowing through. So the only way I could see water getting through there is maybe in a large storm event. Some of it may get shunted into this. But we also saw that 
uh, coming from the, um, the north side of Route 6. Um, looks like some of the drainage finds its way into that channel. Um, so it's not clear exactly how the hydrology works out there. It does get water, uh, but it's clearly not the main channel. But to Aaron's point, I mean, it, it has been part of, like what the DEC did is it used to be the wetlands were just kind of swampy areas and then they started connecting stream corridors and, and the state wetlands uh, designations exp expanded quite a bit as a result of that. So, I mean, I assume this, the state has flagged this wetlands at some point. Has that been a delineation done? That's a question you have to ask the project manager, Frank DeFerry. Okay. So let me ask you a question, a few questions, please. That road in front of that area, the park and ride, yeah. that was the old Route 6, right? Correct, yes. So the work that was done on the new Route 6, which was done, I'm not sure when. In the 60s. In the 60s. 60s um, really changed the area a lot. So areas that would have been on the side, like where I live, are now wetlands. Because what used to be able to drain is now trapped. Is that what you're saying? And yeah, I mean, a, a good example of in your neighborhood, if you go in the, the behind the library, yep. you'll see where the brook used to be. <laughs> right. But it's, it was when they did the re Route 6 relocation, they pushed it north, and now it, it's kind of a straight line that runs parallel to the, to the road. So this has changed quite a bit over the years. Not just because the old golf course was let to revegetate, but the water courses in the area have changed too. Right. And, and obviously the most dramatic was moving the main channel because clearly if you go um, to, to the south of the golf course, you'll, you'll see the Shrub Oak Brook or at least where the water is conveyed coming out of Lake Osceola goes to yeah. that other channel on the, on the, on the south side. But I ask a question, why are we requiring the, or why does the applicant want to plant the, the banks with, with the trees and stuff? Why can't he just put some small shrubs? It's not, it's not, a, 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 it's not what I would consider something that needed to be protected from erosion because there's no flow there. That's, that's, it's my, not, that's it's my contention. Not to interject, it's not so much the erosion with the trees, it's the shade. Oh, so the there's shade's got to keep the water cool so for so the ecosystem no. to continue to grow. Just let me ask you a question. So you want to put trees there for the benefit, actually, for the benefit of the golf course, yeah. right. and, not, the and not for the benefit of the, the banks? No, for the benefit of the banks. So, so well, why do you have to put it, trees? It's the mitigation. The, it's, the, the reason we need to do that is we need to get shade. You're not going to get shade off a, a five-foot shrub. We got to get something up there 10, 15 feet. That's why we pick river birches. Well, what do you want to shade? I, I, I don't understand. The water, the water itself that flows. If you don't keep that water cool, so there's going to be allergy enough? and all sorts of stuff that grows. And it's <laughs> it's one of those things that we're doing it anyway. Beyond me, I still don't think why you have to plant the, the banks. Well, we, we can, some listen, it, that's the end of it. I have no problems with putting shrubs in. I mean, that's my the cost. thought. <laughs> well, they have tree mitigation also. <laughs> I, I think that's part of the mitigation. but. So, Dan, a, a pond becomes a swamp. Swamp becomes ground at some point as it gets filled, it, filled in, filled it up. So it sounds like that's a little bit what's happened here. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still water in the thing. Right. You know, so it sounds so like it's a functioning drainage ditch. But it, 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 it's also, by our definition, would be a wetland. So by it's got the hydrology, it's got right. the vegetation, it probably has the soil. Yeah, but, I think we um, saw some of it mowed up when we were out there. Yeah, we did. So by putting this in, this kind of standard detail, that's going to protect the stream bed then, or whatever we want to call it, the drainage area, the wetlands. So, is it so that that's sufficient? Well, this is what I think we're going to be uh. looking to John and Dan, kind of the to fill in the, the blanks for us because, I mean, you guys do what you do. These guys are, you know, obviously <laughs> design professionals. So I think I, I think we have this on for the next agenda again, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably put it on for the next agenda. All right, and do, do I think there was a few more details that were going to get worked out. Well, we're going to take what uh, Sean and his team have submitted. Right. We're going to take the tree plan, the mitigation plan that they've talked about before. We're going to try to put it into – kind of a unified narrative a little bit. So everything there and with whatever numbers, I'll try to work with Sean to get some dimensions in terms of zones and so forth. 
Uh, I doubt they're going to have to be able to give up 50 feet of, the, of some of their um, fairways and stuff, but we'll see what they can do. And then, then it'll come back for your further, further look. I'd, I'd like to get you know, some information on that, the things you were talking about, to put in the record to, no problem. to, to reduce the, uh, analysis, you know, the mitigation we have to do, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of what we're talking about here, because you know, th th this is would appear to be a sort of, sort of a stream channel uh, mitigation thing that would happen inside a channel that really gets a lot of flow. Now, whether we get a big storm, whether water finds its way, you know, in a ten-year storm starts to to cut yeah. through here, but um, I really don't know the answer to that. Well, but I'll, I can I can look into the FEMA maps and things like that to uh, to assist well, in this. Between our planner architect and our engineer, I think we'll, by the, it sounds like by the next meeting some of these details can get worked out and we can be in a better place to be able to answer those questions. I, I, yeah, I hope we'll, we'll have a clearer picture. Okay. More cohesive picture. Okay. All right. Does that work for the board? Yeah. yeah and there, it appears that there is in the write up, there is discussion as to why and what is going to be done on the banks for the protection of the. Of the stream itself yeah. when, when it's there <laughs> so there, okay. there was more mitigation put into the stream so we could protect the stream that was, that was my my part of my thing okay um, so than, than anything else it was more protecting of that it, i mean if he wants to put shrubs in we'd be happy to work well, with the board I, what, I, what i'll say is we'll we'll lead on the, the town's professionals to yeah. kind of work plan it that works does that sound okay. like a good idea Sounds yeah like a great plan. thank you okay. all right thanks guys all right. thank you very much now what? Okay. Okay. Next four projects are all solar. We have the Kitchewan Farm Solar Farm. This is a discussion for the solar project. How are you? Doing well. How's everyone? Hello. Very good. good. Thank well. you. Uh, all right. Uh, you all know me, but for the record, Julia Magliozzo, Director of Operations at EcoG. Uh, I don't think I'll take the time to rehash what uh, the board already knows about the project. I'll just sort of recap what we've submitted as new materials ahead of this meeting. Uh, so we provided um, some sample photos of uh, an array that we installed in Pennsylvania. I know the board had asked for those last time, so we provided some uh, photos to show those. Um, and we also provided some uh, additional details about the system, particularly in spec sheets. Uh, so I did want to make uh, one note. I'm happy to leave this uh, as a copy with the board when I'm finished. Uh, we provided a spec sheet for uh, some Bovier modules that unfortunately we will be unable to use due to supply constraints. Uh, so we've identified a different module uh, from a manufacturer called Longi. Um, they're still bifacial modules of a similar size. Um, they do still have anti-reflective coatings, which I know were uh, brought up as a concern last time. Uh, so I'm happy to leave this uh, copy of a spec sheet with you all if you would like to keep that. Uh, we also provided spec sheets for the inverters and racking. Um, provided some more details about the access road on site. Um, it will be gravel or item four, um, which is a similar material. Um, we did not provide a spec sheet for that. That is still being designed. Um, did want to confirm, I believe this was raised last time, uh, that there will be minimal or no grading on site. Uh, there's really no significant slopes on site, so we won't have to do anything there. Um, and as well as you can see in the photos that we submitted of the example system, um, with the fixed tilt racking that we're using, we can actually follow slight grades, so we don't need to be uh, grading any land. Um, and finally, we did submit a drawing showing the wildlife friendly fencing, um, which includes a space underneath for small mammals mostly to pass underneath to be able to get through that area. Uh, so I believe that covers all the new materials. Um, I would ask if the board is comfortable, we would uh, appreciate being scheduled for a public hearing in September, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions before you have to make that decision. Any questions from the board at this point? No. Oh, yeah. no. A couple of times. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any issue with the public hearing? No issue with the public hearing. The thing that we are still interested in and uh, have always been interested in is of course being certain that uh, it's screened properly right so we would like to probably have another one or two conversations with Julia in that regard and then uh, the question 
are you planting in and around the panel arrays? Um, anything besides the ground cover that is there now? Are you, what are you doing with that? Uh, yes, so in the actual array area, we will be reseeding what's pollinator friendly uh, seed mix. Um, around the array, we did submit a landscaping plan for the areas around it, um, particularly along the driveway. That was at the property owner's request so that uh, they would have screening within the property itself. But between the rows of arrays, it will be mostly grass and meadow uh, with a seed mix. With the seed mix, okay. And can you describe, I don't know if you know, can you describe what that process is? Do you have to, are you just overseeding what is there or are you removing what's there? scratching it up and loosening the soil and then reseeding both between the arrays and underneath? How, how does that work? Uh, I believe we will just be uh, reseeding the areas that are disturbed, um, so not between the arrays. I would have to check with our team if we plan to, uh, like you said, sort of rough up those areas in between. I don't think that is part of the plan. I'd be happy to check on that detail and get you an answer. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Sure. All right, any other questions? We'll get you set up for that public hearing. Perfect. Nice to work Thank with you. Robert. Appreciate it. All right, and make sure we get some details to John. Yep. Not a problem. All right. Sure. Thank you. I uh, I may just stay here. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey guys, I'm sorry. If you want to talk, if you could. Thank you. Stay right in there. Uh, next, we have the Arcadia Farm Solar Farm. Again, another discussion. Location 1300 Baptist Church Road. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes, so uh, similar thing. Um, uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, so just to provide an update on the materials that we provided, um, similar comments. Uh, so again, apologies for the sort of last minute change. I will leave this with you. Uh, the modules have changed for this project Thank as you. well for similar reasons. Um, it mostly has to do with supply constraints. Uh, so I will leave this additional uh, spec sheet with you all for the laundry module so that you have those for reference. Um, none of the other details have changed. We provided specifications for the inverters as well as the racking for the site. Uh, did want to make note of one other item that we provided for the Arcadia site. Um, we did submit a stormwater analysis, um, which basically in essence states that the uh, addition of the solar modules will not uh, create a significant increase in stormwater runoff. Um, at the moment, we have not proposed any post-construction mitigation. Um, I am actually awaiting comments from Dan Ciarcia about whether he would see any mitigation as necessary. I don't know if he's still here. I'm uh, scared again. <laughs> <seriously. laughs> um, but if, if he does say that those are necessary, we would be happy to work with him to address any mitigation that's needed, but we have not proposed any at the moment. Uh, so I'm awaiting his feedback on that. Uh, and I believe that is all I have to add about the Arcadia Farm Project at this time. All right, and when you say uh, constraints on material, is it you're not able to get? Correct. Uh, so unfortunately, the actual factory that uh, produces those modules has been shut down due to coronavirus outbreaks in the region uh, for a couple of months now, and they have been unable to tell us when they will reopen. Uh, so unfortunately, we had to move to a different manufacturer. China? Uh, it's Vietnam. Vietnam. All right. Any questions from the board? No. John? Not at this time. Yeah. Nothing from me. And Dan was here, but he ran out again. Sure. <laughs> you might want to catch him. All right. Uh, and if I could ask uh, for a public hearing to be scheduled here as well, if there is time in the meeting. How many we got on the next? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Three. Uh, uh, John, I've got a question. Can we combine four. the two public no, hearings because these are such similar? No. Catch no, they be separate. no, they have to be separate, but there'll be one after the other. So. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right. How, how many <laughs> would that be? Four? <laughs> no. Yeah. Be five? Five? Five. That would be six total that you scheduled. Oh, with the, with the public informational, too. Right? Last week, too. Yeah, I'm including some stuff from last week. Uh, what do you expect? Think you let's, let's set it up. I mean, we're going <laughs> to keep I'm going with some bagels. Just put less work <laughs> session items on it. What's that? There'll be less work session items. Okay. Everybody alright with that? I'm sorry? Everybody's okay with that? We are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, there he is.
Exactly. I'll catch him on my way out. <laughs> okay. Next, we have the Old Hill Farm Solar Farm. Yeah, okay. Again, another discussion of the solar yeah. project. Locations 571 East Main Street, Jefferson Valley. Uh, okay. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right around the club too. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. I remember all the barns on this property. <laughs> Good evening. Um, my name is Catherine Honig, and uh, my family owns the property at 571 East Main Street between Hill Boulevard and Lee Road, uh, also known as Old Hill Farm or just plain old Hill Farm. Uh, I'm here tonight in support of our application for a special use permit to take what was once a dairy and vegetable farm and convert it into a 21st century community solar farm. Um, as uh, my family's owned this property for about 180 years. And some of you may know of my grandfather, Ted Hill, his pictures on the back wall. Uh, he was a town supervisor, helped found the Mohegan Volunteer Fire Department and was a state assemblyman for this area for about 28 years. But really he was a dairy farmer. He and his brother ran that farm after his parents did. And they grew, grazed cattle, grew vegetables until, he did that pretty much until he died in 1987. And since then it's basically abandoned farmland and parts that we didn't continue to mow have some invasive, some brush and a few invasive trees. So, um, some of you may know I've been before the town before with different ideas about how to develop this land for the last 20 years. Uh, the property is currently zoned half acre residential and um, unlike some of those other proposals, this community solar project would keep the property in the family's ownership, would be leased, uh, would involve no new buildings, no traffic, no additional school children, no wetlands impact, and also very importantly, environmental and economic benefits for the community and the residents living around there. Um, and you'll hear more about that in a few minutes from the people we're working with. And we've put together a team of well-respected, very experienced people. I think you're familiar with Enter Solar, now known as PowerFlex. They've done a number of projects in the town and many, many projects in Westchester County. They're now known as PowerFlex and a division of EDF Renewables, which is a very large um, service provider and expert in renewable energy and they've been doing it for about 30 years. So we're pretty excited about working with them and hopefully turning this into, as I said, a, a 21st century farm. And we've been working with John Tegeter and the planning department to make sure that we do what we need to do to conform to the new uh, solar ordinance in the town and especially with respect to trees, native plantings, landscaping and the site views for the people who are gonna live near this and drive by it. So I'm very happy to be here tonight to talk about this project, believe it or not. When I first started thinking about what to do with this land with my mother in 2009, I wanted to do a solar farm, but at the time it was cost prohibitive. So here we are all these years later <laughs> doing it again. And um, I don't know if you all knew that my grandfather was the vice chair of the New York Power Authority. So it's kind of especially pleasing to think that We've come full circle and we're gonna be turning this farm into a source of cleaner, cheaper, renewable energy for the town of Yorktown and the people who live here. So um, I'm very excited to introduce you to PowerFlex and in particular Hannah Steffens, and she's gonna sort of walk you through the project. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I also have Eric from um, Bergman. He's our civil partner that we're working with. Um, and I'm Hannah Steffens from PowerFlex, again, formerly Intersolar. Happy to be back in front of you all. Um, we've been in front of the board for the IBM Watson Center project. Um, and then we've <coughs> also done a rooftop for BJ's Wholesale Club in Yorktown. So I'm very happy to be here. 
Um, and we have our site plane here, and then we also have some renderings that we can show um, over the next few minutes. So as Catherine just mentioned, we're here tonight to discuss our plans for her family's property at 571 East Main Street. Uh, we think that this project is a fantastic use of the property, which as she mentioned, was formerly a dairy and corn and uh, tomato farm. Um, and since then, sections of that property have become overgrown with some invasive species and secondary growth. Um, all of which we plan on detailing out in our tree study, that's which is going to be part of our uh, uh, tree mitigation plan. Um, it is also well obscured from the road, so you can see on that first page a rendering um, from the view from, that, from East Main Street. Um, the main visual that you'll probably see is going to be our entrance, which we plan on having two gates um, and we're using existing curb cuts. So we're not adding any additional curb cuts. There's two already on site. We're going to be using one of those for our entrance. Um, and to maintain sort of the aesthetics of, this, of the farm and of the surrounding community, we plan on putting a sort of barn style gate at the front. So that's what you'll see when you drive by. And then behind that, that's going to be the safety gate, but that's with green slotting, um, green slats at the, in the, within the fence. So that uh, minimizes the visual as well into the property. Um, so if you go to the next page, um, page three, those are some of the key considerations um, and benefits for this project that I'd just like to call out quickly. Um, uh, predominantly, there's very strong environmental and sustainability projects. As you know, the clean energy produced from solar improves grid resiliency and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and we anticipate that our proposed system will offset about 4,400,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide in the first year. Um, and is equivalent to removing 1,140 cars from the road and uh, to the sequest sequestration of carbon from roughly 6,400 acres of trees. Um, which the, all of that is detailed in the next page. Um, and we strongly believe that these benefits outweigh the current site conditions of the property. Um, next, local development of solar energy projects like this one allow Yorktown to continue to align itself with New York's broader goals of 70% renewable energy by 2030. Um, and to this end, New York State has incentivized this through community solar uh, by creating mechanisms to encourage this type of project. Um, and the best, the, the best thing about community solar is it's going to allow members of the Yorktown community to participate in our project. Um, and if they choose to participate, they would be subscribers. And that would allow them to save, uh, receive cash savings directly on their monthly cannabis and bills. Um, part of these um, incentives for, for solar in New York are rebates provided by NYSERDA, um, and the project can receive allocation um, when it receives interconnection approval, which we already have from Con Edison. Um, and in the instance of groundwork for canopy projects, the negative secret declaration with the Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, these, considered, uh, these incentives are first come, first serve. And we would like to ask if the board would please consider reviewing the secret process and granting your declaration ahead of your final decision on the project, um, which would allow us for strong project economics and uh, ultimately the benefits for the community. So uh, let us know if that is at all possible. We would very much appreciate it. Um, Eric from Bergman can kind of get into the deep uh, to answer questions here, but our proposed system will have no negative impact on the town's wastewater system. Traffic patterns uh, will require no additional curb cuts, um, and again, no negative sight lines into the property. We have the renderings in the deck, and we have them blown up as well here, you can see, um, and no added light or noise pollution. Oh, thank you, Eric. So yes, yeah, so this was the gate I was mentioning earlier, so you'll see here the barn style gate from the road, and then behind that is the uh, safety fence with the green slats. What's the material? I will have to go back wood to Wood or some yeah. type of wood looking. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, I don't know if we have a specific one spec yet, but we can provide that detail. Um, so, yep, our plan is to continue to work with you all uh, to make this project the strongest that it can be for Yorktown. Um, and our plan is to provide further studies detailing our tree mitigation plan, landscaping, visual plan, stormwater design, and a detailed decommissioning plan. Um, and again, if you have any additional questions, we have Eric here uh, from Bergman to help answer. Um, and the next few slides kind of just go over a little bit more detail for the environmental considerations, um, our tree mitigation plan, and some property screening. 
Um, I do want to spend a minute on the mitigation plan, uh, which will include that tree study that I mentioned earlier. Um, and hopefully that'll show us which trees we need to maybe replant or relocate uh, due to the project. Um, we are also planning on using the pollinator friendly uh, seed mixes within the array as part of our landscaping plan for the project. So we'll have more detail when we provide that. Um, the next page for property screening, we plan on taking advantage of the trees that already align the property along East Main. Um, and we'll provide additional plantings as needed to eliminate um, any visual into the property. Um, you'll see there's the stone wall in this rendering that exists already on the property and our plan is to repair and restore parts of that wall that have sort of um, crumbled off or, or are obscured by brush. Um, and last, we are maintaining the curb cuts. So this one is, you'll see here, this exists as it currently stands. There's about a chain link fence that connects the two walls. So we're going to, uh, part of the restoration of the wall will be to create this um, entrance with the fencing, um, but, but again, that exists already with the curb cut there on the property. Um, and lastly, um, for community solar, with this project specifically, we're expecting that the benefits will support roughly 890 residents in the area should they choose to participate. Um, and that's, that's really all I had. Um, there are some renderings on the next page. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to hearing your feedback and, and thank you for the time and, and um, look forward to continuing to work with you on the project. Thank you. Well, I remember the last uh, iteration of the property and what they wanted to do yes. there. And I know uh, a few different members on the board, but we were really concerned about the impact, especially the traffic yep. and, uh, you know, the amount of development that was going on, on the property. Um, this is clearly very different. I mean, it's again, another farm that's staying in a, to a, belonging to a family that's been in town way over a hundred years. Um, again, I think we have to see the details of the tree. Obviously we all yep. know we've heard the environmental, uh, impacts or the, the pluses to this it seems like every meeting we're getting the same, <laughs> same lesson so i think we're very all very aware of that um is the, is, is the house going to stay excuse me is the house going to stay no so we will be um removing the house and demolishing the house um so i, I think a lot of it's going to be screening i mean on one end you have the the power lines right and you yeah. got club fit I think it's more across the street. We have that very nice uh, detail there. I, I think you're gonna have to start working out the details with the uh, the trees and the environmental impacts. We might have to really look at again. Um, yeah. Well, if you hope to get a neg deck earlier than yeah. later, you're gonna have to work out the stormwater issues, any mitigation issues, which is mostly surrounding tree issues, and also uh, the visual issues. So, okay. and I think you have the schemes. Yeah. in place, but we, we just have to make sure they're fine-tuned and that the board can make a determination that you've tackled all of those and there's no impacts to the community okay. in those regards. Yeah, we really need to see what's going on in there. I mean, this is a property we really haven't been to. I, we never did a site walk when the first application the first came in. Okay. I don't think we did. No, no, because I think it came once or twice and then, you know, kind of oh. The development when well, I was with John Myers, if I remember correctly. We didn't do a sidewalk when they wanted to put the condom, condominium. No. no. The, the, town board didn't, the town board uh, did not act on the rezoning application, so it never got back to the point. Yeah. Okay. But that was clearly much more of an impact <laughs> than this <laughs> used to be. Solar was um, not as economical as it is today. And I, and I reiterate what Hannah yeah, said. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, Tom. Um, to reiterate what Hannah said, the importance of getting the negative declaration sooner rather than later is very important to the economic viability of the project. So we're going to work as hard as we can to get you everything you need so that you can do that comfortably. We're not going to ask you to do something you don't feel comfortable about. So, um, but that is, you know, as the getting in line for a, a, you know, first come first serve nicer to incentive for the project is very important. So we'll work as fast as we can to get that to you. And um, so I wanna, the other thing I was gonna ask John, who's been extremely, John and his team have been really helpful, is what's the, ne the next step for us is to request a public information hearing, is that correct? 
Are we ready for that? I don't know if we have all inf we need tree information and would it help again this is one where I think about the the consultants we've got now is this and again I've never been in on the property so I don't know what <coughs> is actually coming out and I don't think there's enough detail here is this one that would that would help assist or is this do you think not as impactful as the well, last one I think it'd be helpful do we have the overhead so you can see what the property looks like today because it's, it's hard to tell when you're looking at that big thing okay well it's mostly regenerating <laughs> fields and farmland so yeah. in terms of trees not a forested so area. It's not, it's not like Lockwood. Right, yeah, right. And so it doesn't have, uh, it's not a protected woodland under okay. the definition because there's not an area w where you have the three instances. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's really regrowing. Uh, they're staying completely out of the wetland, wetland buffer. Yeah. There's no okay. interest for that. So, I mean, yeah. always so it always doesn't raise to the, the level of yeah, the last one. So this is, if you look at, this is what the property looks like sitting <laughs> here today. Okay. So, and to your point, if you don't, I'll just say it. So here's club fit, and you got the power lines. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the club yeah. fit. The power lines are okay. here, and so these were the fields yeah. all along here, and the little triangular one. And then here, here's the house, the main house. The old house is kind of about to fall down. So that, if you can see, most of this just grew up because we stopped mowing here. We always mowed these. So they're really the tree issues are along the borders, which we're not planning on touching. And then if you know the very end of the property is a huge steep slope onto new route, you know, I call it new route six, that's how old I am, <laughs> new route six. <laughs> and that's all treed and we're not touching any of that. So it's a little more tricky to walk back in these fields. I made them do it, but you don't have to do it. And these are mowed and easily walked. But I think the, I think John had it right. Most of this is invasive Norway maples <laughs> and, you know, um, invasive shrubs. And the real tree issues are around the borders of the property. Which you're not touched. Not the borders, no. The there may be some big trees in around, like here and around here, but the majority of the old growth will be left intact. Well, a lot of our concerns with these solar projects are, because most of them that are coming in are very large, on, on your end of the world, we're worried about uh, the environmental impacts, you know, from removing everything. You know, we've had some very <laughs> substantial ones coming. And then the visual impacts. You know, I don't think the the, the, the wires, the overheads are really gonna be troubled by the solar <laughs> or club fit. But you know, on the <coughs> opposite side as you drive, you know, obviously and on Route Six, we're gonna wanna see it it screened the best we can. Well that's the the main drawing the main renderings that you yeah, saw with earlier. The, gate. the the goal is to make it not look <coughs> like to make it look like it's in keeping with what's around it. Yeah, I, I, we couldn't agree more with you. Restore the stone wall. Additional plantings behind to screen the actual panels. There'll be a fence and then the panels, so we'll screen the fence, then there'll be the panels. And then also to have, you know, not some big industrial gate there, but something that looks more rural. This is you're gonna stay your property, so that's correct. I'm I'm very certain that you're gonna want it to stay in Yeah, my mother still goes to Shrub Oak Methodist Church, so okay. I don't think she wants to hear you don't about it. You don't wanna get her mad. <laughs> I don't think so. So I, I the devil's in the details, so I think we yeah. gotta get a lot of that to John as you start <laughs> to work that out. Do we need that before public information hearing? Uh, if, if you're moving on the track to get the, yeah. I mean, it's better to have it ASAP. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think the public, the critical path is getting that without thinking about the public informational okay. hearing, put it that way. Yeah, right. if you're really geared towards getting that end of it, again, yeah. it's details. Okay. Where I think that's probably easier, right. being, you know, in the. And the PIH is geared toward just getting the, uh, fact that there's a project right. out there and the generalized idea of what it is to the public. So, so uh, I mean, any other comments from the board? I got, John, one question. Look at the to save the house. John, just one quick question for you. If, if a farmer or if the Honigs wanted to return this to a farm, plant tomatoes or potatoes or whatever else, would they have to do tree mitigation to remove the hack and the tree growth that's there? If it was like in an ag district? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess what I'm getting at is if somebody came along and said, hey, this is great planting land. We want to return it to what it was. Yeah. So we're going to have to cut down some trees, pull some stunts, and you know, take care of the hack and the overgrowth and everything else. Well, if it was in the ag district, I don't think so. Um, but I don't think that it is. So therefore, I would think that they would need to get a 
special use permit as a form because it hasn't been used as a form, which would bring you into a process such as this, which would rise to having to look at trees and trees mitigation, even though you're doing farming. Yeah. It just seems like a, a, a an immense burden. I mean, I'm pro tree, <laughs> but I understand. but you know, it, again, it just seems like a, a an overwhelming burden. If you're in an ag district, I don't think it, and correct me, Jim, if I'm there's no zoning. I mean, it just no. doesn't apply. I think the only thing is floodplain, and 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 you know, any work in a, in a way. Okay. Right. But if they were planning on farming again, I would think that they would benefit from getting into the ag district, and therefore. After that fact, you wouldn't have the regulation in yeah, the same no manner. Regulation. Yeah, our, our tree law doesn't have that distinction you're talking about. Right. It, it doesn't. It doesn't recognize this type of situation where it's just once it's a tree, it's a tree in our law, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's an issue. Because it would almost seem like this type of project should have some sort of um, like like an ag district type of thing, because you're reusing the land it's just you're not harvesting every year you're just yeah. putting things on it that are well, and a lot of yorktown was farmed right yeah i don't know it just seems like it becomes such a burden <coughs> i think it's got a question um, yeah, well it's I, i'm sure the locations around the ag district and uh the you, ag district you gotta go up if you could come sorry tom's gonna yell at us <laughs> <laughs> That's a great yell Oz that. back there. I know. I've already yelled at it once already. Um, I'm chair of the Westchester County Ag District. And what uh, gets a district into the Ag District in Westchester County is a number of criterion. Um, the first important thing is the soil maps. And that, uh, that's one criteria. Uh, if you are under seven acres, you have to have Revenue of fifty thousand dollars a year. If you're over s seven acres, it's ten thousand dollars a year. Revenue, not income, just revenue, not net. Um, and ag and markets, New York State ag and markets, is very very concerned about agriculture moving into housing and development. So they came up with ag districts to help protect farmers, be able to maintain their land as farms. Once a farm is in the ag district, it can change ownership. It still remains in the ag district. You know, you're in till you're out, basically. Um, but woodlands can be part of an ag district there if they are helpful to your farm. Like if you have a, like I have a 30 acre farm and probably three or four acres of woodlands on it, but the whole piece is considered in the, in the district. Um, that is a separate assessment from ag assessment for taxes. That's a totally different thing. So um, that's not what I'm referring to. But every county has their own criteria. But state ag and markets, it's, it's r they keep telling us in Westchester that we're too strict and we need to let more, more land in the district. So it's mostly soils. Is there any discussion about solar farms being sort of a special use within an ag district? That, no. W um, s say, like, on my farm, if my farm gets its permit, the rest of my farm that I'm still using for the horse farm will remain in the ag district, and that just portion will kind of carve out. So I won't receive the protections of uh, as I would if I was for my horse farms in the ag district. But the protections are limited because you still have to uh, uh, comply with all of the town ordinances and stuff like that. Just get some, they just want speedier processes for you if you're a farm, basically, is, is how they help. And they help with neighbors. So any other Ag District questions? <laughs> I'm happy to answer. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for sharing. Sure. Thank you. Always <laughs> appreciate it. from the board at this time? No. I knew your grandfather <laughs> and, your, and your grandmother. Great people. Thank you. Ed. So one of your family members worked with the power authority? My grandfather, the one who was the town supervisor. So now I heard, I don't know if it was folklore, that that's why we have the power lines there, that he was 
I don't know that. I'm not responsible ah. for that. <laughs> he, he said to me, I was a little child then. He said to me, why do you think those, uh, if you look at the map, why it goes, and then it comes here and it goes on my property. <laughs> I can't speak to that. I, 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 I was <laughs> the farm was a lot bigger then. So Robert I Moses can't tell you he was such a great guy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. He's also, also planning board chair, too. Realizing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Very busy man. Yes, he was. Thank right. you very well, much. Thank I you appreciate very much. it. Thank Hopefully, you. we'll be back to you very and quickly. You'll work with John. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. It's been really great. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Got one more. We have one more. One more solar farm? Another solar, solar farm. farm. Next, we have the Strawberry Road solar uh, project. This is also a discussion of the solar project. 1645 Strawberry Road. How are you? Doing well, gentlemen. How are you? Oh, good. Uh, I'm Craig Dwyer. I'm director of utility markets for Green Street Power Partners. We are a developer and long-term owner-operator of solar projects throughout the state of New York and a lot of the Northeast. With me, I have Quinn Cupitelli, the property owner, uh, as well as Brian Matthews, who has been our project manager on this. And uh, unlike the previous proposal, I do not have any family members that were historically <laughs> in uh, government. <laughs> it's not a Yorktown. But, um, you know, I think it is really exciting what you guys have done with, you know, the solar ordinance this past year. And we've been tracking it very closely. Also, unlike the previous solar project, we have obtained our utility interconnection approval for a 21-acre solar farm uh, with Con Edison. We've secured everything we need for our nice CERTA rebate, and we have completed most of our engineering to this point, uh, with the exception of a SWIP, but we are meeting with conservation on uh, the 18th, coming up here shortly. So I think what we do have in common with some of the projects that you've seen tonight one of the biggest things we try to do with these community solar projects is, you know, we have to understand that we're in Westchester and there are residential abutters here. You know, I know you guys are seeing a huge wave of projects like this come through because you've just opened your solar ordinance. And one of the things we look at is interconnection viability to Con Ed's infrastructure. Just because someone has a farm doesn't necessarily mean that the power lines adjacent to that farm can host a project. And once a project is, you know, filed and installed on that location, it's multiple projects usually can't exist on that same circuit. So what we've done here is we've identified a location between Strawberry Road and Route 6 with a uh, few residential abutters uh, to the northern side of the property in large part that we can create uh, some nice vegetative screening uh, with a landscaping plan. And we also, you know, have very dense foliage coming in here from Route 6 to prevent any line of sight into the project and are open to additional landscaping there as well. Access will be off Route 6, but we're also in an area with a lot of... We're also in an area with a lot of traffic. And this project here will, you know, we're gonna be purchasing the property and owning the project long-term, so we will not be creating any additional traffic for an area that probably doesn't need more traffic for the residents. So we submitted for our special use permit application um, on July 22nd, and we're here tonight before the board to answer any questions that you may have and see what we can do. Is this the old Knights property? Yeah. Knights Correct. of Columbus yeah. property? Okay. It's made up of two parcels, actually. 16, uh, 1645 Strawberry and uh, RBC Industries, just east. It's been vacant a long time, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is all wooded at this point? It is wooded. We, uh, we did have an arborist come in and do a tree inventory so that we knew exactly what was coming down. Okay. So there are about 600, uh, a little over 600 trees that need to come down uh, that are over eight inches in diameter in DBH. But uh, there are a number of invasive species on there, about 70 uh, trees that are invasive species. And uh, as you all know, you know, uh, development is booming right now. The trees are going to be used for lumber. Um, That's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So hopefully they will help to support, you know, yeah. a new home for a young family uh, somewhere in the county. And we understand also the, um, we understand also what needs to be done with the tree fund. So we will be replanting on the northern side of the array. Uh, in the final landscaping plan, you know, is, uh, you know, subject to further review with the planning board, but right now it's a proposed 80 trees. What's the species? Uh, the Tuya green giant. So it's gonna be 80 trees along the northern side to try to create as dense a buffer as we can for the residents up there. And on the northern side of the array where uh, the residents are, we can actually, since there's no shading, on the northern side of our array that we worry about, we can actually put about as dense tree coverage as necessary to make sure that uh, we can try to be a good long-term neighbor. You know, how do you have a tree inventory of how many you are removing? We do. Yep, I believe we, uh, we did submit the tree inventory in the plan here so you can see them plotted not only by species, so you'll see there are, you know, 53 black locusts, uh, a number of other invasives on there as well, Norway spruce. And then on the following page, we have uh, them broken out by diameter at breast height. Thank you. No problem. I feel like you guys are pretty much experts in this by now after seeing, you know, all of these different proposals. So uh, we wanted to come prepared for you guys. <laughs> and this data is quite a, quite a book. <laughs> on the other side of the tree. <laughs> but that's, you know, I think good this, use of the land. This, this raises the same, you know, I mean, the big issue we're dealing with is sparsely forested areas like old farms versus this property and the Lockwood property. I think we have to come to grips with the impacts and figure out what we want to do in general on this well, stuff. On, on the Lockwood property, we asked that the, our environmental right. consultant come in yeah. and do a look. Um, um, this seems to you do the same thing I then. I think so, because yeah, it looks like it's similar. I think it's the same problem. same questions, right? Same yeah. Question. yeah. And the alternative, if it were subdivided and the homes were built, that'd be a hell of a bigger impact. Yeah. And the trees would be removed as well. Well, the hill, like the fire, everything's cleared already. Right. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's a different application. It's like some of the farms. Yeah. Yeah. This, you know, obviously mm -hmm. there's. there's as they've presented, there's, there's impacts in the area. Yeah. So to, I, just to get ahead of it, you know, because they've already got all I, the other legwork done. Right. Which we, that would possibly, if there's any concerns, we're going to know about it right away. Rather One than note on the subdivision. 100% hmm. correct. It's, uh, it, I don't want to say it's a backup plan, but the property has been vacant for quite some time. It's something has to happen there. Hmm. We felt solar was the least footprint we could do yeah. traffic trees as opposed to 30 plus homes or yeah, what's like it, what's it zone for? small family. family right so half acre get what 30 half acre. Yeah. maybe yeah yeah it's a little bit of wet but yeah, it's it's all right, what so was high big impact yeah, well that's it <laughs> the trees would in that situation most of, more of those trees would come down sure more pavement would come in, mm -hmm. more traffic would come in, pressure on schools. Yeah, school, stormwater too, more stormwater. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny, the, the school board, Mike, when I said that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it, look at the student center. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're going to request. They're manufactured a different way. <laughs> uh, um, I don't think there's any real issues with the 
project as we see right now, but we are concerned when we see an, uh, an area like this with that kind of development, mm -hmm. environmentally, you know, we're we're are a little bit more heightened to the impact. So what we've done mm -hmm. in the, with another prior application is the town's gone out and gotten consultants that will review this. Obviously, the applicant gets the bill, but we want to make sure you're all right with that. So I would ask John to look into that and work with you guys to get that moving forward. I think since it's our consultant, it would bring it would alleviate a lot of the issues. What's the matter, Walt? To the what? Open space. Open space. Yeah, it's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron says no. <laughs> no, we'll get, we'll get it to everybody. Of course. Thanks, Walt. All right. Perfect. Okay, thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Have thank you. Thank, thank you too. very well, much. I bet you it was a four hundred. So, uh, just to clarify, yeah. after the consultants take a look at the site, we'll coordinate that with uh, John Tegeter. We want to work very closely with yeah. with John, we'll help Robin, you and Nancy. Perfect. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Look forward to getting back good. in front of you guys. All right. Guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> some people are. Some people are. Oh, I'm cool. sorry. What else we got? That's it. When's our next? Oh, we're now meeting. Motion. Motion oh, yeah. <laughs> no. You don't need a no, We want to be here all night. <laughs> yes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. That's right. <laughs> hey, Walt. Well. It wasn't nice. so bad. It is, it is easy to wait.